hi there welcome to the ultimate physics channel the topic of uh, today's video is relativistic energy and einstein's mass energy equivalence leading to the very famous uh, equation in all of physics that is a is equal to mc squared so in this video i am going to discuss mass energy equivalence and derive the expression a is equal to mc squared let's proceed to do that we know that in classical mechanics the kinetic energy of an object moving with velocity v is given by this expression half mv squared this expression can be arrived at from the work done to move an object through a distance let us say s by integrating the product of the force that moves that object through a differential distance ds that is integral f dot ds gives a work done and this work done can be equal to kinetic energy provided the object was originally at rest under this condition we can derive kinetic energy as integral 0 to s the force is rate of change of momentum so we write db over dt ds ds over dt is velocity so i write a dp into v 0 to now v because we are changing the integrand here so we have integral the uh, momentum expression is mv times v so if we do this we have now uh, the integral of the form integral x dy is equal to x times y minus integral y dx so this particular formula we are going to use here to arrive at the value of this integral so it is uh, so it is uh, in our case the x is v and uh, the y is mv so we can write x is equal to v uh, dy is equal to d of uh, mv and therefore our y must be equal to mv so first we have the xy term so xy is mv squared minus integral y dx or y is mv and our dx is dv right so here mv squared minus mass is constant so i take it out of the integral 0 to v of v dv uh, which is equal to mv squared minus m uh, v squared over 2 upper limit is 0 v uh, lower limit is 0 so we have mv squared minus half mv squared which is equal to half mv squared so this is the classical expression for kinetic energy that we are familiar with now in special relativity this expression for kinetic energy cannot be valid why because we know that in special relativity our expression for momentum p is equal to mv is no longer valid so we know that in relativity P is equal to gamma times mv. So now we have to substitute that in this particular uh, integral to arrive at kinetic energy. So I write kinetic energy is equal to again integral of 0 to v uh, d gamma mv into v. Right? So here uh, obviously this is a constant m so m is uh, m, uh, m times uh, integral 0 to v uh, d gamma v into v now in this case the x turns out to be v and the y or dy first turns out to be d times uh, gamma v which is v over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared because gamma is the Lorentz factor which is 1 over square root of 
1 minus v squared over c squared so this is dy and therefore our y turns out to be v over simply square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared so applying the same formula here again i'm going to write uh, m times uh, xy xy is going to give me uh, v squared over square root of this term uh, 1 minus v squared over c squared minus so xy minus integral y dx so integral uh, y y is v over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and our dx in this case is dv so i write dv here right so we can now write uh, that this particular integral alone we will try to first uh, uh, work out separately right so i'll try to work out this integral here so we have integral 0 to v of uh, uh, v dv over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared right so i can do some substitution here to simplify this integral so i take 1 minus v squared over c squared to be equal to some x squared so i say let and therefore uh, minus 2v uh, over c squared dv i'm just differentiating this I'm getting to x dx on the right side right so I can just cancel these twos right I end up having an expression for v dv right so my v dv is equal to um, c squared x uh, dx of course this minus sign I can transfer it to the right hand side now this integral I can continue to write now as uh, integral of uh, v dv over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared 0 to v can be again written as there is a minus sign here so minus c squared is a constant and i have x dx and in the denominator whatever i've taken to be x squared is in square root so square root of x squared that is going to be x so the numerator and denominator these two terms will cancel here effectively i have uh, minus c squared integral dx uh, which is x of course so minus uh, c squared x x is i know we know it is uh, square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared so this is what we have so if you apply the limits here uh, that is uh, 0 to v we get uh, upper limit minus c squared square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus the lower limit here we put 0 for v and therefore we get only minus uh, the only c squared so if minus is taken commonly as out uh, here we have c squared so this is basically the this particular part and there is already a minus sign here there is a minus sign so this will go on as plus so finally i write the kinetic energy term again as i'm kind of continuing from here here with this result so i'm going to write mass outside v squared over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and this minus and this minus we already have uh, cancel that so i have uh, c squared square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus c squared this is the expression that we have now for kinetic energy so if i uh, take mass inside now i have mv squared over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared plus mc squared square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus m c squared this is the expression we get for kinetic energy so i again write kinetic energy in this case is therefore equal to i take square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared as the common factor therefore i have numerator m v squared here plus here these two terms i have to multiply so i will have m c squared within 1 minus v squared over c squared in the brackets minus i have uh, 
m c squared times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and therefore now I have kinetic energy again equal to if I expand this term I have an uh, mv squared here first term plus mc squared minus mv squared then I have the last term mc squared multiplied by 1 minus v squared over c squared within square root and then denominated again same term repeats right so now we know that these two terms this mv squared and minus mv squared can be cancelled so we have uh, mc squared over this as the first term so we can write uh, ke is equal to mc squared over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared minus the second term is simply just mc squared so we can write ke is equal to gamma times mc squared minus mc squared right so this is the expression for kinetic energy this is the relativistic expression for kinetic energy right so here this is like kinetic energy is equal to some total energy let me just call that as e minus mc squared right so if a kinetic energy of the object is zero then i have e m minus mc squared is zero and that gives me e is equal to mc squared this is a very famous equation attributed to albert einstein in relativity that is e is equal to mc squared therefore i can reinterpret this as k is equal to gamma mc squared minus mc squared or gamma mc squared is equal to ke plus mc squared the total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus some energy and i call that energy as rest mass energy that is the energy that is associated with any object that has a mass so this is what we mean by mass energy equivalence in special relativity so this is the essence of this expression this very famous expression e is equal to mc squared uh, this famous equation attributed to einstein has this physical significance that any object that possesses a mass has an energy that is associated with it and that energy is called as rest mass energy and therefore it is like a potential that is held by the mass that it has that much energy with it because of the presence of that mass so we have many situations in physics where this equation becomes very useful in calculating energy mass conversions in such situations for example i will discuss very quickly two such examples where this equation comes in very handy so let us discuss two examples where this mass energy equivalence can be clearly understood first one is the nuclear reactions be it fission reaction or fusion reaction in both these cases the reactant side and the product side has generally a mass difference and this mass difference can be explained in terms of this particular expression where where an energy equivalent to the mass results in such reactions so these reactions are basically exothermic reactions with a lot of energy output for a very small amount of mass that occurs as the difference between the reactant side and the product side the energy that is output is enormous amounts right in fission reaction we know that a heavier nucleus splits into lighter nuclei and uh, there is going to be a mass difference between the heavier nuclei and the total mass of the all the lighter nuclei put together this mass difference is called as 
defect mass defect this mass difference is called as the mass defect and when we multiply that with this a c square we end up getting energy in the same way for the lighter nuclei fusion reactions occur where two small lighter nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus and again uh, the total mass of the uh, lighter nuclei is greater than the mass of the heavier nuclei and therefore again the difference in mass uh, is obtained in such reactions as energy and that's why nuclear reactions are highly energetic reactions. Another example in physics for E is equal to mc squared is pair production and annihilation. What is pair production and pair annihilation? Pair production is production of a pair of particles from photons which are basically quanta of energy. Right? For example, a photon, a highly highly energetic photon such as the gamma ray photon can result in a production of an electron and a positron pair. This reaction is called as a pair production reaction. Whereas pair annihilation is destruction of a pair of particles to produce pure energy and wherein a same reaction can be seen in reverse uh, an electron and a uh, positron annihilate each other uh, resulting in a release of uh, energy in the form of photons. So these two uh, are very uh, classic examples uh, for uh, the mass energy equivalence principle of a special theory of relativity. Thanks for watching.